In early July of 2018, archaeologists made an astonishing find in the Sidi Gabir district of Alexandria. It was a massive black granite sarcophagus. And the first impressions were that it spoke directly to every myth about mummified curses that we have. This is the story of that sarcophagus and its mystery. I am your host Morten Eriksson. Welcome to Ancient History. To be more precise, the find was made during a construction work on Al Kamil Street in Sidi Gabir district of Alexandria, which is part of the areas which were in the main location of the ancient city, placed close to but not directly at the waterline. These parts are still on land. And I say this because earlier earthquakes have sunken parts of ancient Alexandria underwater. The first striking feature of the tomb is that it does not seem to be a tomb at all. The resting place for the sarcophagus seems to be more of just a deep pit, which is in itself rather strange, considering the size of the find. Anyhow, the archaeologists soon understood that they had a huge sarcophagus at the hands. It stood out from the beginning. It was not adorned by elaborate sculptures, as is often the case with Roman sarcophagi, nor did it have the lush golden color of Egyptian ones. It had an inconspicuous smooth surface of black granite. It also lacks any inscription, making its identification even harder, adding to the mystery. It is huge, almost three meters in length, that is about nine feet and two meters in height and one and a half meter in width. Once it was uncovered from the dirt, the archaeologist tried to open it, but was forced to give up that try due to an unbearable, disgusting stench that arose from within the coffin. It was so appalling that an army engineering corps had to be called in to assist. It turned out that the sarcophagus was partly filled with a reddish-brown oily goo. Since no one knew what it was, the area was later cleared for fear of toxic waste. It is still unclear how the fluids got into the coffin, but it is believed to be some kind of sewage water that has found its way into it at some point in the past. Once the archaeologists finally got inside the sarcophagus, they found the remains of three former mummies or skeletons. Naturally, they were in rather bad shape after having spent time in the toxic soup. Only the bones were preserved. Initially, there were no traces of fabric or gifts of any kind. It is still unclear who the three humans were, and it was initially thought that they might have been three generals of Egyptian descent, one of which had an arrow wound to his skull. Adding to this, they appeared to be the original inhabitants of the sarcophagus, since the sarcophagus itself appeared to be undisturbed. Yet it is believed that they were buried on different occasions, since they were found stacked upon rather than beside each other. Analysis shows that the three skeletons belonged to a rather small woman, about 160 centimeters tall, and about 20 to 25 years old at her death. One man between 35 and 39 years old, about the same height as the young woman. The second man was much larger. He was about 179 to 184 centimeters tall, that is about six feet, and between 40 and 44 years old when he died. The larger male was the one with the hole and fractures in his head. Later examination of the body outruled the possibility that the wound was made by an arrow. It is now held to be much more likely that the hole originates from an earlier trepanation. That is a surgical operation when you drill a hole into someone's skull for whatever reason. It is the oldest known surgical intervention, but also rare in Egypt. It is also clear that the wound was not the cause of death. These facts taken together leaves us with even more questions. 
the dating places, the sarcophagus and burial somewhere between 330 and 30 BCE, which leaves us right in the Ptolemaic era, up until the Roman conquest. It later turned out that there were some other finds in the tomb and coffin. Near to the sarcophagus was found a heavily eroded alabaster head, completely unintelligible for any kind of identification. But for me, the head looks more Roman or Greek in origin than Egyptian. And among the remains in the toxic goo were also three small golden panels with three different symbols. These were first believed to have been military emblems, but that line of argument must probably be abandoned. One of these gold plates carries the symbol of a poppy pod inside a shrine. Opium was used in medical matters as well as a symbol used for death, sleep and rebirth. The second one is harder to decipher, being more unintelligible. But perhaps it shows a stalk of grain, like wheat, related to rebirth and fertility. The third plate has a snake, not seldom used in graves, sometimes related to Isis and as a symbol of rebirth and beneficent demons and snake jewellery is primarily connected to females. Who then were these humans in life? First of all, Cleopatra or Cleopatra was 39 at her death, so the female skeleton is not hers, ruling out that sensation. Nor is the young man Caesarion, being 24 at his death. Marcus Antonius, on the other hand, was 53 at the time of his death, being too old as it seems for the older remains. DNA tests has yet to be done to decide if they were of the same family. We are thus left with facts but no answers. Who were these humans? Were they important? And if so, why were they buried in a rather insignificant grave? And if not, why were they buried in a huge black doom-looking sarcophagus of 30 metric tons, the biggest ever found in Alexandria? Hi again. If you like this episode, hit that like button, share a link with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. And if you would like to help me to make even better documentaries about the past in the future, please consider joining me at Patreon. I've put a link to my site in the description below. See you soon.